Hey Padawans, welcome to today's video. I do have new Loungefly and Funkos that I could show you, but today is actually going to be more of a conversational video. We are going to be talking about our hopes and dreams, specifically our Star Wars hopes and dreams. <laughs> I have my bucket list here that I've been putting together. So I'm going to go through the list, but it's not going to be in any particular order. I might rank these and put it in the description. I actually thought about doing that trendy tier list thing where people rank things, but I realized you actually need to have a Twitter account to do that and I don't, I'm not on Twitter. So I just wrote it down on paper. So here it is. So let's jump into my bucket list. And like I said, I do want this to be very conversational. I want to get ideas from other people uh, for some of the things that I want to do. I'd love to hear your suggestions on how I can go about doing them, if you've done them before, your experience, was it pricey, was it worth it? So honestly, on YouTube, nothing makes me happier than getting a new comment and getting to reply to it. I think it's the most exciting thing that can happen. Subscribers are great, but what I'm most looking forward to is the dialogue and the conversation. I'll have specific questions for each of these, so if you happen to have an answer, I'd love to hear it. Okay, so let's jump in. This one has been on my list for a while, my mental list, so now I've committed it to paper, so now it definitely has to happen. But I would like to go to Endor, the Endor moon. So Redwood National Park is where they filmed all of the Endor scenes for Return of the Jedi. It's where the very adorable Ewok live. The comment prompt there is, have you been to Redwood National Park and would you recommend it? Or what other filming locations have you been to that are on your bucket list? For the bucket list I'm sharing with you guys right now, that's the only filming destination that I have on there. I'm thinking that once I visit Redwood, I'll then look at what other filming locations have caught my eye and then add it to the list. But that one, as far as filming locations go, that one is priority for me at the moment. So yeah, let me know if you've been already or let me know what other filming locations are worth adding to our Star Wars bucket list. Moving on to number two. That felt really unnecessary, but here we go. <laughs> I have on here that I'd love to do a Star Wars photo shoot. I honestly can't remember the last time I did any kind of photo shoot. I'm sure it would be really intimidating once I actually go and do it, but I feel like, I don't know, I feel like, you know, late 20s, I feel like you only have so long to do like silly sci-fi photo shoots. Not that you can't do one when you're like 80 years old, but I would probably be less likely to do a Star Wars photo shoot when I'm 80 years old. God willing, I get to be 80. So yeah, I just kind of want to do that sooner rather than later. I think it'd be fun. I'd obviously want to dress up in some kind of cosplay. Um, and cosplay is actually something that's on this list, so I'll, I'll get to that a little bit later. But yeah, having hiring a photographer and going out to a destination that feels very Star Wars-y and maybe getting a professional editor to do some cool Photoshop and some cool effects. I think that would be really cool. So yeah, stay tuned for that maybe happening in the future. Um, I guess the comment prompt there is, have you guys done a Star Wars photo shoot and would you? And is that something that you would want to put on your bucket list? Moving on to feel like I have to do something cool for this. I've already set the bar really high. Number three. Let's not say that again. Let's try to be more normal. <laughs> okay, so number three kind of goes with the last one and I'm gonna start to sound really self-absorbed, but <laughs> I'd love to get some commissioned concept art by a digital artist that has their own unique style. Um, a self-portrait of me, uh, probably as a Jedi with a lightsaber. I'd love to put it on the YouTube banner and get that updated because I put what I currently have on Illustrator together and it's all right. I'm not like the most proud of it, but I would love to get some concept art on there. That actually might be happening pretty soon. I am in talks with an artist about it. Uh, I'm going to send over some ideas and the concept that I am going for and hopefully everything works out. If not, I'll just keep an eye out for 
other artists that have opened their commissions. So yeah, that may be happening sooner rather than later sometime this year. So that'd be cool. Um, the comment prompt there for you guys, I'd love to know, have you guys ever commissioned art by an artist? I know a lot of people like to get concept art of their Dungeons and Dragon avatar. Is that something you've ever done? And what fandom was it in? And what was your experience with that working with an artist? I've never commissioned any kind of self-portrait concept art. So any <laughs> advice you have to give me would be great. Number four is to go to a Star Wars convention. I saw a lot of YouTube footage of Star Wars Celebration 2022 that took place in California, Anaheim, and that looked really cool. They had a lot of big Star Wars names doing interviews, and obviously you get to go and cosplay as your favorite characters, maybe get some signatures on your Funko Pop boxes, and just make some friends and have some fun conversations, walk around and look at concept art. I love concept art. I just love the litmus. Uh, I just love the limit limitless <laughs> why is that so hard to say I love the limitless creativity that concept art provides things that you know realistic art can't portray um, the only convention I've been to in the past I went to an Emerald City Comic Con in Orlando and that was really cool conventions are kind of hard to attend regularly because tickets are so expensive. I'd love to go to one that is specific to Star Wars and get to walk around and look at everybody's cosplays and maybe go to some panel interviews and maybe see some spoilers for upcoming shows, pick up some exclusives. That'd be awesome. I won't be going to 2023 Star Wars Celebration in London. Well, I checked and all of the four-day tickets are sold out. Um, so not only is London kind of hard to get to, but um, the tickets are sold out. They only have Monday tickets left, and I'm not going to go all the way to London just to go to one day of the convention. So I'll see if I can keep an eye out on when 2024 tickets drop next year and be more prepared because I do think they sell out really quickly. My comment prompt for you guys there is... Have you been to a Star Wars convention in the past? And what was your experience of that? Were you able to get some cool exclusives, meet some actors, some screenwriters, some directors? Yeah, I'd love to hear about it. I've never been, <laughs> so let me know. Number five, I'd love to get a lightsaber. I don't actually have one. I guess that's kind of embarrassing to admit when you have a Star Wars related YouTube channel. <laughs> But I went to Galaxy's Edge in Disney World, and rather than spending $200 on building a custom lightsaber, which honestly isn't even that bad of a price, most lightsabers cost about that much, if not more, if they're quality. And I don't know if the Disney ones are quality, but that price, I would assume they're quality, um, or at least, you know, you get to customize it yourself, which is cool. They, like, show you the different pieces, and you get to put it together. Anyway, I'm rambling about Disney lightsabers. But I went to Disney World's Galaxy's Edge in Florida and I went to Droid Depot and I built my custom droid instead of building a lightsaber because, I mean, I guess you could do both if you have all of the money in the universe, but I don't. So I just built my droid um, and I was happy with that. So I'd still love to get a lightsaber and that actually is already in my future. I pre-ordered the FX Elite. I believe it's by Hasbro. I got it on Target. It was on a special sale. So I saved about $61 and spent $200 on that one. Um, the other FX Elite lightsabers that I saw on YouTube looked good when I did some quick research. So I took the leap and pre-ordered it. It'll be a while before we get to see that. But once it comes in, whenever that happens, I will do an unboxing video maybe and a review and let you guys know if I like the FX Elite Obi-Wan lightsaber. And then I'll have a lightsaber. Number six, I already mentioned the fact that I've been to Galaxy's Edge Disney World, but this one is going to Galaxy's Edge Disneyland in California, Los Angeles. Honestly, 
it's probably really similar to the Orlando Galaxy's Edge. Same attractions and same drinks at Ogut's Cantina, I imagine. But I've never been to Disneyland at all. And I've heard it is a different feel from Orlando's parks. This item isn't specific to Star Wars because it's kind of Disneyland in general. But if and when, God willing, I get to go to Disneyland, obviously I'm going to go to Galaxy's Edge and get some blue milk. Oh no, I didn't have a comment prompt for the lightsaber. Let me rewind. <laughs> the comment prompt for the lightsaber. Do you guys have a lightsaber? How many lightsabers do you have? Do you want to give me multiple? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Don't give me your lightsabers. Keep your lightsabers. But um, yeah, do you have any? And which character lightsabers do you have? Do you have a custom lightsaber that you designed yourself? Where did you get it? Where would you recommend that people get lightsabers and where would you recommend they definitely do not get lightsabers? My brother recently recommended this one store called Saber Forge. So I checked them out earlier. I did not get a lightsaber because like I said, I pre-ordered one, but I might check them back out in the future and maybe get a Saber Forge lightsaber. Fast forwarding back to Galaxy's Edge and Disneyland, the comment prompt there is, have you guys been? Would you recommend going? Or do you feel like it's kind of a waste of time and money if you've already been to Disney World to Galaxy's Edge? So the last item on this list, I believe, I didn't include any collectibles. I mean, I guess I, I could really quickly. My only collectibles bucket list item is to collect all of the Padme Funko Pops that come out in the future. I did miss the ones that are super expensive now, like Queen Amidala Throne Room Funko Pop that is now like super expensive. And there's so many more Padme Funkos that Funko can make and honestly should have made by now, you know? She gets like the most costume changes and yet she has like the least number of Funko Pop variations of all the lead characters. Anyway, I'm going on a rant about Padme Funko Pops, but it is on my bucket list to just keep an eye out for when those come out so I can get all of them. Those are my Funko Pop priorities for you. The last thing on my bucket list, number eight, nine, ten. <laughs> I don't know. I stopped counting. I'd like to do a Star Wars cosplay and I have a few ideas and Maybe not just the one time, because if you go to a convention, you want to cosplay at least one day. If you go to Galaxy's Edge, you want to cosplay a little bit. Not necessarily cosplay, but Disney bound. So I'll talk about some of the ideas that I have. I do want to do a Jedi cosplay, and I think I would want to do that specifically for the photo shoot so that I could send the photos along to a professional editor and have them professionally edited. <laughs> And get some cool effects on there maybe some cool backgrounds and yeah i would prioritize the jedi cosplay for the photo shoot that i was talking about earlier another cosplay i'd love to do is a queen slash senator from naboo so obviously naboo has the very regal queen attire where sometimes you get like the white face paint with like the little red dots um I don't think I'd necessarily like to do that because I'm going to change this. I want to do specifically a senator from Naboo because I have very sensitive skin and I don't really want to put a bunch of white powder on my face and get all rashy. So let's not do that. Scratch that off the list. I want to cosplay as a senator from Naboo because you still get to have a really cool hairstyle. You still get to have really cool hair accessories like... Padme does in the film, and you still get to wear a very, a very regal dress the way Padme does as a senator. I wouldn't cosplay as Padme specifically. I kind of have this thing about cosplaying where I don't like to cosplay as existing characters because they're their characters. You know, those actors are the cosplayers of their characters. I like the idea of coming up with original characters for yourself, so I don't think I would do a Padme cosplay necessarily, but who knows? That's just my thoughts 
at the moment. I just feel like they'll never do it as well as the film did it. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, unless you're like really good at cosplaying and you have really amazing like makeup and hair and like sewing skills, you can have like film quality. And maybe that's just like the pessimistic side of me that's like, it'll never be good enough. But yeah, I don't know. <laughs> What's funny is I love to see other people dressed as existing characters. When I run to Emerald City Comic Con, I took a photo with someone that was cosplaying as Thumbelina, which is one of my favorite animated movies from when I was a kid. And I was just so excited to see it. And it was so good. And the wig was just the most amazing wig you've ever seen. And the dress was so cute. Um, so I loved it on her, but maybe it works because she was cosplaying as a cartoon character, and so it, there wasn't, like, a direct comparison between the two. I don't know, you guys. I need to be exposed to more cosplaying so that I could really make up my mind. So I'll circle back with you on that. I have been wanting to dress up as an X-Wing pilot for a while now. I just feel like it'd be so cool and just the coolest outfit because I like orange, I like jumpers, I like the pilot helmets, I like Luke as an X-Wing pilot, so I feel like that would be such a cool costume. And it wouldn't technically be a cosplay of an existing character because anyone can be an X-Wing pilot, you know, if you've gone through the training, and obviously I have. And that cosplay, I think, would be really great for the convention that I end up going to. And I'm sure there would be so many other X-Wing pilots there, and we could all take a big X-Wing pilot photo together. Like, I just feel like it'd be neat, you know? Because you can do that, like, cool, like, Spider-Man thing where you're like, Hey! <laughs> we match. Twinning. <laughs> I'm such a millennial. That's my bucket list at the moment. Obviously, it's amenable and open to changes and open to suggestions and your advice. So let me know what you think of my hopes and my dreams. <laughs> let me know what your hopes and your dreams are. You know, are there filming locations that you want to go to? Oh, my comment prompt for the cosplay. Have you cosplayed as any characters? Or, you know, what would you like to cosplay as in the future? And tell us about that. I'd love to hear about your cosplay experiences. Did you buy your cosplay outfit or did you make it yourself? Did your friend make it? Did your mom make it? Did your dad make it? Yeah, I just want to know all the things. I'm just super curious because I haven't, I've enjoyed Star Wars for a long time just by myself. But I haven't really ever been in the Star Wars community Know what I'm saying? So I would just love to hear from other people and their Star Wars experiences. Anyway, what was I saying before? Yeah, leave a comment down below. Um, tell me about your experiences and I look forward to reading your comments. I hope. <laughs> That's it for me today. I'm losing my voice, so I will talk to you later. May God bless you and I'll see you soon.